So yeah, I graduated from uh, the University of Dubuque in 2012, and it, it's, it flies by, guys. Like, it goes, cr it goes crazy fast. Life goes crazy fast. I, I just remember, you know, when I graduated in 2012, you, you go back a couple years before that. In 2009, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, I don't know if this is good or bad to say, but I went to school to play college football. And football taught me a lot. You know, my classes taught me a lot. There were certain professor professors that I would clash with, but I just kind of keep rolling forward. And it was a trip to Chicago when I saw the buildings and there was a construction project going on. I looked up and I heard, you know, I could smell the iron. I heard the pounding. I'm like, man, real estate's something that I really would want to be in, involved in. And, you know, I, I knew I had to find a way to make income, though. So what happened was I got involved with a direct sales company, actually. Is anyone in here in direct sales? Sometimes they get a bad rap. But what I saw was an opportunity to basically fund my own business without having to go out and raise money on just an idea, which is nothing necessarily wrong with that but I really wanted to be able to put myself in a position where I was more in control of, of my destiny early on. What happened was when I graduated school, I got involved in that. I started to get people on board. I started moving the products. I started getting other people that you know, wanted to make some extra income to pay off debt or make income to save for their own business. And within two years, I, I grew it to the top 1% of the company and I, I'm very frugal. And so one thing that I would recommend if you're looking at starting a business, invest as much as you can back into that business. When, when that thing started paying me, you know six figures on the side doing it part-time I still live right now I still live very frugally I have an $800 a month apartment I drive a super simple car I don't have any crazy watches and stuff like that because every single dollar that I, I make I, I think about it this way if I can put that dollar back into my business it's gonna be worth 10 or 12 times that 10 or 15 years from now it's gonna allow me to do things that maybe I want to do right now it's gonna allow me to do all those things later in life so there's a lot of things that I do say no to. I'm still active in the direct sales company, but I first started in 2012, I got my first property. I'd saved enough money to be able to buy a four unit. Are there any, any people interested in real estate here? Real estate? Okay, cool, 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 cool. That's awesome, should speak my language a little bit. So in 2000, is, and then I, I guess I wanna go back too, because I know there's some people that are interested in tech. Yeah, are you tech, tech people? Okay, and just, just shout out at me, what are some of the other things that you guys are interested in as far as building your own business or other than tech and real estate? Someone be brave. Fashion. Fashion? Fashion? Okay. What else? What else we have in here? Health industry. Health industry? What do you got? <laughs> Health and fitness? Okay, cool. So when I saved enough money to basically get that four unit, you know, it was a type of, the type of property that I looked to buy then in 2012 was something that I could basically turn around, that I could add value to. Because I knew that if I could add value to it, that'd be the fastest way for me to kind of grow, grow my net worth, grow the value of my business versus just buying something for cash flow and maintaining it. So we, we purchased, I purchased a, a four unit that the rents were something crazy, like $400 a month and the building was kind of run down and so we got a really good deal on it. I bought it so that it was cash flowing. It was you know, holding itself up. It was making money every single month. We went in there and we turned the property around. We did you know, remodels and way better marketing. The other owners weren't marketing the property at all. We started marketing it and the rents just started rising and rising and rising and soon you know, the rents were double what they were before. So my dad, and my mom and my sister are also partners with me in the real estate. I, when I say we, I also mean our team. So like, I'm not good at, like I, I could not change a light bulb, yeah. right? So when I say we, it's my team, like property managers, our maintenance team and stuff like that. We turned that property around. We got it, we had some really great, great tenants in there. It started cash flowing and I saved that cash flow, right? So then I sent out letters to, to other property owners in the area. And it ha so happened to be that six months later, the guy that owned the four unit right next to my four unit he was getting older, getting sick of, you know, it was getting run down because he was getting sick of managing it and stuff like that. So he sold it to us for a really good deal. And it was the same type of thing. The rents were really low. We got a really good deal on it. We turned the thing around and raised the rents, provided really good service to our tenants, provided really nice homes for people and families and recognize a lot of value out of that. Just a quick example of like being able to add value, right? And this, is, this goes across, this is a, the whole business world, not just real estate. You can apply this to anything. You could apply it to buying a, a poorly managed business and going in there, buying it and fixing it up or you know, whatever, but we added enough value. So I bought, we bought those things. It was like $40,000, $45,000 per unit. And I had an offer come in not too long ago on them. I didn't sell them, I'm not looking to sell them. Um, I had an offer come in um, for about $76,000 per unit, just a few years later, right? I mean, what, 2012 to now. And so when you look at the power of that, there's a lot of power there, right? And so now, you know, 
What I was very diligent in doing, and I think is super powerful, and it's what I was talking to April about too, was you know building a personal brand and stuff like that. And that's kind of why I'm here today. I mean, I'm super interested in building a brand. Everything that I did in that real estate stuff, I, I, I posted on social media. So people started following me and just asking me questions. And through that, I found other investors who you know, wanted to be able to get a return on their money. And so I went out and found deals that made sense so that I got basically for putting the deal together, I got equity in the thing. Um, I put my own money into the deal and then the investors put their money in. We have 110 storage units. I just got another accepted offer on some storage units. We have 250 apartments right now that are under, under uh, management and owned. And it's just been a really, really fun process. Just a quick side note too, because I know, you know we have some people that are interested in the tech space and stuff like that. I was involved in a tech venture. We were out in, um, out in Silicon Valley. It's ask.vet, called it vet 24 seven back then. The whole thing was being able to consult with a veterinarian and the veterinary exams through cell phone, through videos, have your pet records right online and stuff like that. And that was 2013 when we started that. And I guess my whole thing with the Silicon Valley, not that this is right or wrong, in, in the whole tech industry is that they're all on raise money, raise money, raise money, raise money. And I, I was always like, well, what can we do to make money now to then reinvest back in the business? And so we kind of clashed a little bit with that. It's a completely different world. Not that you can't go out and do it, but not every single thing is Facebook, Instagram, Uber, where it has a ton of attention already that someone can, is going to pay and invest a ton of money into that um, because of that attention, right? So as far as starting up, a tech, a tech, uh, something in the tech industry or in the fashion industry, what I would do is I would somehow find a way to get a, a minimum viable product and start, you know, start selling it, make money so that you can back yourself. The reason that I was comfortable buying real estate and taking other people's money is because right away they're getting a return on that money. They're paying down debt. They're seeing appreciation They're So they're, they're right away. They're getting a return. I wasn't comfortable and I didn't really agree with how we were raising money out in Silicon Valley uh, for that project. But once again, not that it's wrong and it, it, a lot of people win that way, but if you're just thinking that you're gonna raise a ton of money, there might be another way that you can do it. And maybe it's not even a minimal viable product. Maybe it's, maybe it's you have another side gig and you're saving money that way to start it. You can do a lot more with, with 20 grand, 40 grand, 100 grand than you think. And it's relatively easy to save that amount to put into your own business and back yourself, it's relatively easy to do that on the side. Is it gonna take you maybe a year, two, three years to save it and some sacrifices? Yeah, you're gonna be able to, you know, maybe you don't go out as often, maybe you don't buy the nice car, maybe you don't buy the nicer clothes right now, but if you can, if you can sacrifice some of that stuff, you can save and you can back yourself and come out way ahead in the long run. And I think it'll teach you a lot more too, versus just trying to go out and raise money for, for an idea. I could be completely wrong though too. It's kind of my story. My dad's a veterinarian by trade, fortunate enough to, when we bought another location in Beloit, Wisconsin, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to have a part of that deal. And then we merged. We have 21 veterinary clinics throughout the United States now. So we have a lot of those locations and I'm a, I'm a shareholder in that as well. Just kind of have a, a, a wide background and I'm not an expert by any means. I'm still learning every single day. I wish that we were, I was filming some of this stuff in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, because it was just a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard times. There's still hard times today. No doubt about it, I'm nowhere near where I wanna be. I don't think I'm anything special at all. What I'm obsessed with is just growth in every area of life, and that includes business and, and finances and relationships and spiritually. Um, so just growth in any uh, form is what I'm, what I'm all about. So right now I think there's a total of, I have two property managers, I have three maintenance guys that are on the, on the real estate side. The reason I started a management company actually was because when we, so in November 2016 we closed on an 88 unit and 64 units. And the 64 units were in Milwaukee. The 88 units were closer to where I live in Janesville. You know, they were big mortgages that we had to sign with banks, right? And so the banks were like, you know, yeah, you've done management on, and you've improved these eight units that you have, but we need someone that's professional to come in to do these buildings for the first year. And I said, okay. So we went out and, you know, I kept the same management that was at that building. And that, you know, that was a mistake in my opinion, now looking back on it. Six months in, there was like 12 vacancies out of 88 units of that property. There was theft going on. It was a lot of not, not, a, good, not, a, not a good situation to be in. And so what I did, kind of being the per type of person that I am, where I'm like, I'm gonna go get it and take care of it. I didn't even ask the bank if I could start managing it. I just fired them. And I'm like, I'm gonna be better off asking for forgiveness versus asking for permission. I just basically started putting ads out for number one, a property manager, because just with other projects I have going on, I was going to need help 
You know, I wasn't gonna be able to do it alone. And I wanted to do it right. You know, I wanted to build a company. So I put an ad out for a property manager and that's when we hired Deb, our first property manager. And she, you know, had a background in construction. She had a background in property management, senior living, tax credit properties and stuff like that. I interviewed like six or seven people and she was the one that got the job. And then a maintenance worker is just local there in, in Delavan, the town that the property's in. And he's living on property right now and he takes care of anything that goes wrong. And so I, I always was wondering that too, is like, how, how do I find the people? How do, you know, but when you just go, when you just commit, committing is the biggest thing, right? When you just commit to your dream and your vision and where you want to be and you start taking action towards it, all, you figure it out. You figure all that stuff. That's our most popular thing to say actually around the office is if we don't know something, we say, oh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. That's what we do and we kind of laugh. It's just getting connected. When you put out, when you put out um, job offers, you can, you can use Facebook, Indeed, um, Craigslist. There's a, there's a lot of great places to put job fo postings. Mm -hmm. ZipRecruiter is another really good one. And then you just interview. And the first thing I do when I interview is I look for, do they fit the culture? Is it someone that I want to be around? Yeah. Is it someone that um, is a good person? I want to be around good people, not negative people. I want to be around good people, positive people, people of integrity. That's the first thing I look at is if they're integrity. I, I have to be able to trust the person. On the contracting side and the, uh, um, the maintenance side, one of our other maintenance guys, he was actually a guy that built one of our vet clinics, my parents' vet clinic back in 2000. And so he'd been, he'd been running his own business. So he was kind of getting sick of doing, doing things for other people. He's, you know, mid fifties. He wanted to kind of start slowing down. And there's a lot of pressure in that industry. There's a lot of pressure when you're building developments for other people. There's a lot of pressure, and so he wanted to come on board and start doing some of our maintenance and smaller projects and, um, and stuff for us. So that was how I found another one. The first property we bought, I put in half, and then I came up with other half through family. So family's one option, right? Now, I knew I was right. I didn't want to, ha you know, so you, you got to know that you're right if you're going to get your family involved. You should know that you're right if you get any investor involved and have the right intentions. But I started there. That's where you hear a lot of people starting as family and stuff like that. And then what happened was because, you know, I was posting all that stuff. I'm not even going to lie. Like I'm on the border. And if you, some of you guys see what's going on on my social media and stuff like that, I'm border. Like I walk a fine line of, of very humble, arrogant, confident. It's kind of like a mixture of everything. And when you're an entrepreneur, you kind of have to be a mall. So I posted the whole journey on, on Facebook. I wasn't scared, you know, in 2012, 2013, when people were, we're, you know, we're still coming out of 08, 09, 2010, obviously. People are like, you're gonna get involved in real estate. You wanna go to someone's house and unclog a toilet at 2 a.m. And so I was getting a lot of hard times, but I, I would still, I was brave enough to talk about my vision, my goal, my dream. People would be like, oh, where do you wanna go? What do you wanna do with this? Just get four units? I said, no, I wanna get 50,000. Not that I have a, a, a cute, no, uh, like this love affair with 50, the number 50,000, but I just figured that'll keep me going long enough. It'll give me something to shoot for, right? Will I ever get there? Probably not, but I just keep shooting for it. So I was very vocal in where I was going with it. And I was telling people what I was doing. I was showing people before and after pictures of what we were doing. And I remember I showed a guy we know out in Pennsylvania. I remember I was keeping him in the loop of what was going on. He ended up selling his business um, for, I don't know, tens of millions of dollars early 2016. And when that happened, he knew what was going on. So he kept, he kept asking, how are your four units doing? How's, how's the eight units doing? And I would show him pictures. I would show him what's going on with the rents. And I would show him the you know, the, the financials on them and stuff like that. And he was impressed with what I was doing. He's like, if you can do it with eight, you know, you can do it with 88 units. Let's go buy bigger deals. And he's like, I'll back you. And, and for doing the legwork, you're going to get paid and you can have equity. You can put your own money in and you can build a property management company around it if you want. And so that's kind of how it started. So I had those two. There was a storage unit deal that we did. I ended up having to not put any money into that, just a lot of legwork. And we raised $60,000 from my buddy's grandma. She was she had it in a Roth IRA and she saw the opportunity with us and and it's been a great great deal for her. The people that choose you, they're going to choose you because they they see the drive that you have and like they see your commitment to it. Once again, going back to the word commit. Like when you're committed to something, people can people that are successful, they can tell if someone's committed, you know, and has that drive. But it helps you to start building relationships too. The sooner you start building relationships, right? Then those people will start following you or seeing what's going on and they'll want to be around that action. It's hard to just cold calling investing's not, it's not the way it's going to happen really. You could give them a little bit of equity up front too if you wanted. You know, I'm, I'm very, 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 very lucky that my parents, my dad, you know, grew in the business that they grew too. My dad worked, oh, you know, hundred hours a week, but I never really realized that growing up because he was still always around and still always came to my football games and my sporting events. So we were very close and they always, they always encouraged me to pursue excellence, right? And so I was very lucky the fact that I had that support. So when I asked, it was simple for me to say, look, this is what I'm doing. 
and they knew they knew with everything I did before that in life though from kindergarten all the way through like if my like in third grade they knew I was committed to what I was doing because in third grade if my mom wasn't home to take me to football practice I was walking three miles in I, I literally I would start walking three miles in until her car I would see her car come up over the hill and she'd pick me up in the middle of the road so they knew like whatever I was gonna do that I was gonna be committed to it and I think it just goes back to that again and if you have to give them some equity give them some equity Katie's a great example who's here filming today like she's someone that there's a lot of people out there who are doing something today that they don't necessarily want to be doing. It's not their dream. And they'll come and they'll help you work on that thing for very, very little pay. Because they want to be a part of something that they'd rather be a part of that. If I would expect any of my employees to be more jacked up than I am every single day, that'd just be stupid of me. No one is ever going to be in love with your dream more than you are. you got to do the right thing and it's got to come from the right place in your heart. But if it's coming from the right place in your heart, have them help you. It's not going to be a full-time thing, but if they have five hours a week, but then you better remember that and be, better be able to take care of them when you're able to take care of them. I take care of my people. I have other things going on, so I don't need to pull income from my management company, I'll, and it's a good thing because it, it pays me very, very little per month because I just kick it right back towards my employees. I'm the least paid person that's, that's in that company because what I'm building is bigger than just me just right now. If something goes wrong where my team or, or I start to worry about it too much, I go and find the next big problem to get their mind off that because that then usually what happens is that thing automatically gets solved. It's not that we ignore it, we don't ignore it, but we the moment that you spend just sitting there dwelling on an issue is when, in, like, like if there's nothing, if you don't know the obvious answer, just keep rolling, go to the next, run into the next big problem and that thing's gonna solve itself. I mean, I would just use the, I would just use the management thing. I mean, I would just, I, you know, we were that that property that that other company was managing. I mean, it was it was having issues, it, like it was not good. Like it was not a good situation in April 2017, with 12 vacancies and and money just going out the window because they were spending just way over budget. And so, what did I do? I decided to hire people. I decided to start a, a management company. I didn't I didn't try to go find another. So I ran towards a bigger problem with trying to start my own company at that point and having to pay people on top of that dealing with that issue. Versus someone else might have said, oh, here's a problem with this company, I'm gonna go find another third party management company, right? So that'd be, that'd be kind of digressing and running away, but I ran towards a bigger problem with, that, with, with my mind still on that problem that we have to solve it and it'll get solved eventually. I did eight units, right? And now doing 88 units, I'm like, man, the headaches, like the headaches are the same. But the reward is in the 88 units. Is it way more reward in 88? So now I'm sitting here thinking at, about it. I'm going to f I'm going to, to Florida next week. I'm going to Tampa one day, Orlando the next day, Jacksonville the next day. Probably look at 40 properties in those three days, and they're like they're like huge deals, like 700 unit properties. Like, but I'm I'm sitting here thinking I'm like if I can find a way to get that done, I'm gonna have the same headaches at 88 units as I will 800 units. But 800 units is gonna be a heck of a lot bigger reward. I play with people that know what the risk is. They, they, know what, they, they know what they're getting into too. You know, do you worry about it? Yeah, you worry about it. But I also, so I also, once again, going back to surrounding my people, uh, surrounding myself with people who really believe in, in me and what I'm doing and my vision and, and all that stuff. You know, the guy that invested with us on the, on the big properties, he just sold his company for, for a lot. And he said, look, you know, I believe in you. This thing's not gonna, this thing's gonna work. My, it'll, it'll work in the long run, it's gonna be just fine. He's like, if anything goes wrong, we'll come together, we'll figure it out, right? So once again, you go back to figuring out. You can just get paralyzed if you start to, start to worry about all the things and try to be fearful of what could go wrong. I have more fear about ever having to work for someone else than I do that type of stuff. Are there certain times I wake up, before I close any deal, like I just, on, the way over, on my way over here, I got you know, an accepted offer on some more storage units. And it's like, I'm excited about it right now, but the night before closing, yeah, I'll probably wake up and I'll be like, oh, is this what I wanted? You know, even though I've done it before. So like that fear is always gonna be there, whether it's for, you know, taking other people's money. If I take on investors and I'm able to already have something that has value, I have a lot more of a peace of mind there and a lot less fear. So that's going, I have fear when I have a tech idea, right? and I'm trying to just raise money off of an idea. I have a lot, I have a lot of fear there because I've seen what goes on in that world. Because not everything is Facebook. Not every, I hope someone goes on and creates the next Facebook or what, you know, whatever, but like, um, because there's not an actual cash flow there yet, right? So you're taking someone's money, speculating going forward. I always thought I'd be managing my own property, 
but once the bank told me that I had to have a professional person in there, I kind of gave up on that. I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, 2021, 20, that'll start. I never had the vision that I'd be managing third party property. So like for other owners that I have no ownership in, I, and that's happening now, we're starting to do that now. So that changed a lot just because I saw, once again, there's a huge problem where I feel like, and this is just a stat that I made up, where I, but I feel like 90% of property management companies, there's a lot of bad things going on there. And so I'm like, here's, here's a solution. And here's what, what I can do to be different, to set myself apart, to be transparent. So they see where every cent is going and they know what's going on. I mean, things change. Like if you're not gonna change when things change, you're gonna get, you're gonna get left behind. And so I just, I'm not scared to, ch I, I, and that's another thing, you know, so going back to hiring people, integrity is the first thing I can look for. Hard work and like just willing to get the job done is the next thing I look for. And then um, being, able to change is the third thing because nothing's I, I don't try I don't want to be the same I'm like you have to be able to get in this environment and you have to be ready for change because it, it, it changes fast and you can't keep up with change And if you get too set in your ways where you don't want to change you're not gonna fit in here so I accept I want I want things to be changing the rents those were four hundred dollars a month whatever 450 a month when we picked them up but the rents in the area were 820 so right away we raised the rents up to 700 or what 650 or whatever. Well, I can't remember the exact amounts. So we were still ahead of the. We were still better at you know what I mean than the whole area. And a lot of the properties that I buy, I look for properties that if I go a block north, the rent's 300 dollars a month more. If I go a block south, it's 300 dollars a month more. If I go a block west, it's 220 dollars a month more than the property I'm looking to buy. Because then I'm always in a competitive. You know I could be wrong about this. I haven't been doing it that long, right? Five years isn't that long. Um, but I look at it and I'm like, okay, now I can raise my rents $150 a month and still be very, very, very competitive in the market. So like now though, my eight units, they are the highest priced stuff in that area by 45 bucks. But I have people, we're starting to get recognized. I mean, that we take care of stuff. If something goes wrong, they don't have to worry about it. We're gonna be over there to fix it. So we have, we have plenty of, I have a wait list, but it just takes time. Cause yeah, and I'm not, I never wanna be the person either that right when I buy the property, I'm not just gonna, raise the rents like crazy and murder some family on it right like it's it's gradual and a lot of times we start to raise the price when we have a vacancy and that's where we bump it up to market then right away you affect a lot of families right. you know like even at 250 units which i'm not i'm a small it's a s small fish in the world that i'm playing a tiny tiny fish but even at 250 units like that's a lot of people you're impacting i think about i i really that's an awesome question actually because i really had never really thought of that until we got a little bit bigger i'm like that's a lot of people and that's a lot of lives. We have a couple of vet clinics that, you know, they're triple net leases, just straight up basically office space. There's a lot less maintenance there, right? I mean, we're not having to go, a lot of the times that when you get like a commercial tenant, like a business in a building, they're reliable for all the repairs and all that stuff. So there's a lot less maintenance there. Um, a lot less headache usually, a lot less, um, a lot less phone calls as opposed to the residential side. I mean, anytime they have a maintenance request, if the fridge breaks, if the, if the, blinds fall off if there's a burnt light bulb like we get calls for all that stuff so there's a big difference there i want stuff to break <laughs> because there's a there's a big markup in in the maintenance and in construction and so when it's a different company and if i'm I, I, not that i want stuff to break but i mean there's ways there's there's a lot of money to be made there as far as like a gross like you know profit where your profit margin is i mean they're probably both similar just because i mean but your your actual revenue won't be as high on the commercial side normally because like for example I have a at the storage units we have a I don't know 4,000 square foot shop that a concrete company rents from we just collect their check every month they're reliable for all the maintenance so it's really nice we still get a ma management fee off of it and everything it's a little bit different because uh, the 50 unit that we the 50 unit that we manage in Beloit for a third party owner another owner there's a big markup on all the on all the maintenance my profit margin is way off too right because I'm a growing company my accountants get mad at me because like these new accountants that I'm looking at working with they they're like, well, why are you, why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? And you're overstaffed. I'm like, because I'm growing. Like I'm, my profit margin right now is not going to be maybe 25 or 30% like some other pro property management companies that are out there. It's going to be 5% maybe because I'm literally, my dollars are going back into the business. I'm hiring the next person. I'd rather have a longer bench of players so that when, if someone comes to me and say, Hey, you have, I have 200 units for you to manage. Can you start? I said, we can start tomorrow because I'm ready to go. Versus saying, oh wait, give me 45 days because I got to train somebody, I got to hire somebody. I gotta, I'm ready to go right now, I'm committed. My dollars are going back into my business.
So I might not be the best person to talk to as far as the profit margin and where they should be and what right now, just because I'm so aggressive and putting money back into my business. We have one gal right now that works with all of our businesses, um, all the veterinary clinics we have and our real estate stuff. We kind of share and she's, she always gets mad at me because I can never remind, remember her actual title. It's like uh, director of employee engagement and development or something like that. With her, we, we try to implement that culture and grow people as leaders. We do a lot of leadership. So once again, I, I take extra dollars and we had our, one of our property managers, Deb, who's been with us the longest, attend a full day leadership thing with some of our other employees from other businesses. And it's just like, you know, it's just growing people that way. So that's definitely on our mind and we, we were starting to get like an organizational structure rocking and rolling. And I'm being coming more of aware of that because I want to set myself up to be able to, to scale faster. And I'm looking at it a lot more too is, okay, how many units do I need to have apartment wise to go to this area, right? Because if I'm going to go to Florida, it can't be an 80 unit deal. It can't be a 40 unit deal. It can't be a four unit deal. It's got to be 400 units because there's some scale there then because I can pay someone that, that needs, I can pay someone enough that I can get the right person that can get in there to be on our team to do that. The competition part is what I, I'm like bring it on because I know we'll do a better job. It's just that the size that I'm at now, it's having the credibility. That, that's more of it is having the credibility to get my foot in that door. So like in Madison right now, there's 200 units that the guy's looking at giving us that, that he's getting older, he's a big developer in the area. And he's, he wants to be done doing the third party stuff. And so I've been working on them since like October. It's just like the sales cycle is so much longer than what I'm doing now, it's crazy. It's getting my foot in that door to be able to do it. I mean, I know what, we know what needs to be done. We just need that credibility. We need to get, be able to get our foot in the door and given an opportunity at a 400 unit place or a 200 unit place. I feel like sometimes it's harder because a lot of the times an owner that's in that deal will have a management company come in. So it's almost like I have to have a piece of that ownership and put the deal together to then manage it. I'm so glad that I built this management company, at least you know so far I am, right? Because now that gives me, it's another revenue stream for me, right? I mean, instead of paying someone else 5%, 3%, 8%, you know, whatever, depending on the size of the property, that's a lot of dollars that are coming back to me and my company versus somewhere else. And I think we're gonna do a better job too. Our holding company is an LLC our, that, that owns the equity, that's an LLC. And then each property we put in an LLC underneath that essentially. So like if we have our holding company, which is, I'll just throw the name, it's SG Realty is our holding company. <coughs> so that's made up of me and my family. Yeah. Any deal that we do, so let's say, you know, Delavan, we called it Delavan 88 is what we called it, the LLC. So we have that LLC. SG Realty has a percentage of that LLC and then so does the other partners LLC. Where my employees sit is Spalding Group and that was an LLC, but now we're changing that to an S Corp for um, basically for just employee reasons and tax reasons. When we started buying property, we started the holding company, SG Realty LLC. So that's, that's that actual ownership in that land, in that building, right? Yeah. And then our management company where our employees are is another company which is now an S Corp. I worked a lot for free and mowed a lot of lawns for my dad at, at, at our two other clinics and stuff growing up. I, were, I had an internship with Northwestern Mutual for, a little, for six months in college. I was just an internship. I love Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin and the Midwest is a great place to invest. It's harder to find bigger deals right now. We have some veterinary clinics down in Florida. And so I want to start to get to know that multifamily market. I'm going down, I don't know that I'm going to buy anything in the next or maybe ever down there, but I want to at least know. I need to dip my toe in the water and uh, I guess I need to jump in and figure it out, you know, and see. Um, but I, ch I chose Florida because we already have some businesses down there. I chose, you know, Tampa, Orlando, and um, Jacksonville, specifically Jacksonville, because Jacksonville is growing like crazy right now with a lot of jobs and stuff that's going on there in Orlando just because of, you know, the, the tourist destination. There's so many jobs I feel like there that are, it's just a good place to potentially invest. Life is so short that you just have to go after what you want to go after. And there'll be a lot of people that will say you can't do, like I might even been one today and, and been poking the hole at the, you know, people trying to raise money for the tech, you know, go do it. Don't listen to me on that. Go do it. Whatever, whatever it is that you wake up in the morning that really gets you excited, that's what you gotta be doing. I mean, I have, there's, there's certain friends that I've had that have just been miserable. Why? Like it's not worth it. And some people think that, you know, having a job is more secure and, and stuff like that. And, not really. Before that company goes down, you're going to be gone. Most likely, they would probably fire you, lay people off. When you're in control and when it's your company, I like I like that it comes down on me instead of someone else for my living. 
go after what you want to go after. Don't wait. Life's way too short. You can do anything that you really want to do. I know that's, a, that's some cl cliche stuff. Always do the right thing. Have the right intent. Be a person of integrity. Build relationships like we were talking about before. And just work hard. Like, love what you do. When you love what you do, I work uh, an insane amount, uh, amount of hours every single week. But it's like, it doesn't feel like I work that much because I'm surrounded by the people I want to be surrounded with and I'm doing what I love to be doing. And when it's your company, when you get to a certain point, you can pick up and leave for three days if you need, to, if you need a reset. At any three days you just set tomorrow, you could leave. Just go after what you want to go after. Have no regrets. Zero regrets. Regret makes me want to throw up just thinking about it.